Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and Android Pie as we now know it is out for Pixel devices and the Essential Phone and will soon be coming to other devices. So I wanted to cover the top five things that you need to know about this release. Now this is a pretty nice release. I actually like it a lot. I've been using it in beta for a few months and one of the things you may notice immediately is the navigation. Now you do have the option to go between this one and the old one, but this is the gesture-based navigation. So you swipe up, and swipe the application away. You can do the same for everything. If we want to open this one, go home, we tap. Maybe we want to say open Boost, which is a Reddit app, go home. If we want to swipe up and go between the two, we can go between the two. And then if we want to tap and get more options at the top, we can. We can get app info or go to split screen. And this is how we manage split screen in this particular version. So it's pretty simple and straightforward once you understand how it works. And then we go home or we can go and swipe it all the way down and go back home. And now we've got the full page back where we're at. So it's a really nice gesture based app system and swiping between apps it's really quite simple to go back and forth. You get used to it and you can swipe back and forth this way as well. And then again, if you tap and hold the home button, now you've got the Google Assistant. So I really like this gesture based system. It took a while to get used to, but now that I'm used to it, I think it's really nice. But if you hate it, you can go back to the old one. The back button only appears if you need it within an app. So now it's here. You go home, it disappears. Now the next thing that they've added is adaptive battery. And we all want better battery life, so if we go into settings here, go to battery, adaptive battery, it's turned on by default, but you can turn it off if you want to, but it limits battery for apps that you don't use often. So it's more aggressively managing the apps this time around, and I find I easily get past four hours of screen on time on the Pixel 2 XL, at least in the beta. It could improve even more, and I just charged this so you'll see it's only been 10 minutes or so since I've been using it fully charged and I did not charge it to 100% so it didn't drain that fast. So that's a really nice feature. They also have done the same thing with display. So again if you go to settings then you go to display then you've got adaptive brightness. Now this is not like Apple's adaptive brightness. This is adaptive brightness that actually adapts based on what you're in. So you see your screen brightness will automatically adjust your environment and activities. You can move the, the slider to help adaptive brightness learn your preferences. So maybe when you're in feed mesh, you want it turned up, you can turn it up, it will remember it. If you want it turned down in another app, it will remember that. So it's not only adapting to its environment, it's adapting to your specific preferences, which I think is a really nice way to do this and helps with battery because some applications have white text, others have dark text or dark backgrounds, and depending on your environment, they're harder to see. Now, as Android P adapts to you, if you go to the app switcher, you can do that quickly by just swiping up in one swipe based on what you're using regularly and maybe you do during the day, we'll start giving you suggestions here. And this is one of those really nice features that doesn't seem useful until it's there. And it has to learn what I'm doing now that it's updated, but you'll have little bars here and I'll put a little screenshot of what Google shows. And those will give you maybe transit times or different apps that you use during the day, throughout the day and adapts to that. It's a really nice way to do things. The fourth thing that's really useful is if you hold the power button here, you've got a couple different options. You've got screenshot now. It's a quick way to do screenshots. Now you've got screenshots and we can go to that screenshot and go to edit. So within that screenshot, we can edit the screenshot itself, maybe mark it up. So it's easier to do that. And it's a really nice way just to do the screenshot editing and it's built in and very helpful if you want to do something quickly, maybe highlight something like that, highlight this and share it with someone else. Now another part of the UI is the volume button. This I found most useful. It defaults to the music volume, or if we go to the settings button here, media volume. So it's defaulted to that. You can adjust them individually. And when you want to silence the phone, just hit this button or do not disturb. I find it really helpful and it's something I use all the time and is a definite improvement over the previous version. Now there's something new called slices, although it doesn't seem to be working yet and it integrates with applications. So maybe you use Lyft or Uber, you can search for that specifically right in the search bar and it will give you that relevant information. So maybe you search for Lyft, it will tell you the time in which it would take for the Lyft ride to get to you at your current location. Once those are turned on, I think 
think that's going to be very useful. It's not yet turned on. You can search for movies and things, but it doesn't seem to work really well. Now, if I go here and search for, say, Avengers, it will show me where I can watch those, and if it's a current movie, it might give you local times where it's playing and everything like that. So I think it's going to be very useful in the future. Now, the final thing that we don't have yet is digital well-being, and that gives you app information, and you can opt into that. So if you go to Chrome, and then you go to Android Pi's website, it tells you all about it and see where you're spending time. Great technology should not should help, not distract. So it does all these things similar to what Apple is doing now, but this came first in their announcement anyway. So it shows you timers and things you can set for different applications. And if you want to try this out, you have to have a pixel and you have to sign up. I'm not in this beta yet, but you can sign up here and then use all of those features. If you want to see all the other features within Android Pie, you can do that on this web page. I'll link it in the description below. And if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, this is actually a built in wallpaper and it's from Renee Smith. So it's at this location from Renee Smith at Google Plus. So I'll try and link it if I can find it. Otherwise, just do a search for it. Just to show you the build we're on, you can see right here. And if you tap on this, you still get the same Easter egg you got before. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like. Let me know what you think of Android Pie in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.